What's going on guys, it's Adam from Spiritist Systems. And today we're doing the second video in this two part uh, short duration patrolling uh, video. And the first video we did, which you can watch if you want, uh, we'll link it, is about your pack and all the items that you're gonna throw in your pack. And uh, this video is gonna be about all the stuff that you wear uh, or that's in your chest rig, things like that. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, my weapon. Seems to be the thing that everybody's obsessed with, although it's just one of the many tools that you're gonna be carrying around with you. Um, there's really nothing really nothing special about it. Uh, it's just a 11 and a half inch uh, carbine. I have very familiar tools to anybody who's in this community uh, for any kind of like security patrolling or anything where the conditions uh, may be mixed. I don't really know what I'm gonna be faced with. I do like to have a three by uh, attached to my, to my rifle. I have everything on unity mounts. Uh, this is so that I can get a good uh, sight picture using my optic while wearing a gas mask still, which is something that's important to me. If you think about um, anywhere where you are denied the ability to breathe correctly, I don't wanna be denied the ability to use my weapon. So I, uh, I always have that mount on there. Uh, EOTech for this guy, I find that the EOTech is a little easier to shoot through with, uh, with night vision and a gas mask on, but I do like aim point stuff as well, so it doesn't really matter, but those are my two kind of go-tos for uh, red dots, aim point, EOTech. Um, going further down, I prefer the mall. I've talked about it a lot in depth and at nauseum and other uh, things we've published, but I still think it's the best option out there on the market. And it's one of the only options that are actually available at the time of this video. You can basically just get one. Uh, you don't have to wait for it. You don't have to know someone. There's nothing special about it. You can just order it uh, from B. Myers or one of the distributors out there. I uh, also have the very controversial Mod Light on there as well. I still think Mod Light makes the best light. Uh, we compare them often and it seems to be the best. I do have the 100 Concepts little uh, cover on the front, just flips out of the way. Uh, just a little peace of mind that, you know, I'm not going to uh, ever ND the white light when I don't want it. Um, everybody in the element should have that same setup. That's really important that no one is accidentally uh, hitting their, their white light button and illuminating everybody in a tree line or something like that. Um, I do have a suppressor on the weapon. Uh, which suppressor? This is an NT4 from Knight's Armament, but it really doesn't matter as long as it keeps your weapon quiet and, uh, and has a proven track record. Uh, this one I got uh, really honestly a little bit for nostalgia, I'm not gonna lie, but it also is a tank. This thing has been in service for uh, many, many years and is really never going to have any issues. So that's it, uh, that's the rifle. Uh, this is a Noveski, by the way, very fancy Noveski. The key takeaways on a rifle are that you need something uh, reliable, something that you have used often and has a proven track record of performance. Uh, you don't have to go out and buy the most expensive race guns on the market. Um, there are plenty of brands out there that make really good rifles. My preference is Noveski. They're very high end. Uh, you can also use something like a BCM and be completely fine. Uh, it's a perfectly acceptable weapon. It's gonna be fine and it's gonna run. Just make sure you know your weapon and know your optics and know how to, know how to use them. Uh, so moving on over here to my helmet. For me, helmets are pretty non-negotiable. Uh, you should be wearing a helmet even when you are patrolling without body armor on. Um, that is, that's just a, a preference of mine. And in my element, that, that's what guys would be doing. Your head can still be injured even when you're not wearing body armor. And it can be injured from a lot of impact stuff, riding in a vehicle, uh, things like that. You should be wearing your helmet. It's also the way that we mount our night vision. So I always wanna have it with me for sure. Uh, in some cases, I will remove it, extreme hot weather, things like that. I'll take it off and just run uh, some kind of hat. But I really think that uh, you should be wearing your helmet and you should be getting used to being kind of uncomfortable in it and sweating and things like that. Uh, I, for EarPro, I have the amps. 
uh, headset, which if you're not familiar with uh, EarPro, this is made by a company called OpsCore. Um, you can see that they kind of do this weird face hugger flip out thing, and then they kind of lever in to the helmet. Uh, I've, I've tried everything. I've tried every single type of ear pro on the market. Uh, this is what I keep landing back at is, is the OpsCore amps. A um, couple of reasons why I like them. I like that they create a very nice seal, uh, a lot of pressure around my ear when I'm wearing them. I like that they have uh, the internal hearing protection as well, uh, that you know it's passed through so I can actually still hear what's going on. So I have doubled up hearing protection. That's important to me because I don't want to lose my hearing, right? So uh, I like them because of that. I like them because they can easily be detached from my helmet and put on a headband if I needed to. Uh, and they've honestly just been really reliable and the battery life on them has been pretty good. That's not to say that Peltor or something like that is not a good brand. I use, I've used those as well. Sordans, whatever, they all work. Get your, you know, get your hands on a set of good hearing protection uh, that, is uh, noise canceling so that you can hear what your team is doing. Uh, this becomes very important when you're doing any kind of fire and maneuver um, is to be able to hear each other and communicate. I do have a light on uh, my helmet. It's on an ax mount from SNS Precision, uh, which means that I can articulate it kind of back and forth uh, so that I can point the light in different directions. Uh, one of the techniques that is taught down at Darcy, uh, I want to give credit where credit's due. Um, I didn't come up with this but basically levering your light backwards like this and then turning it on, essentially you just can illuminate an entire room uh, without having to blind everybody in the room. So there's that. Uh, Hellstar 6 for my strobe. Um, I use one that is, you know, has the overt mode and the covert mode on it. Uh, these are pretty prolific now, you can find them pretty much everywhere. There's other brands out there. This is just the one that I prefer. Uh, SNS Precision makes a Manta as well. That's a good one if you're looking for bargains and stuff like that, trying to figure out what different brands there are. Uh, there's also one called a Trilobite by Adventure Lights that I haven't really seen too many people using, but it seems promising. You can check that out. Uh, iPro. I always keep an extra set of uh, goggles on my helmet. Uh, and these are, you know, they don't get worn all the time but I have them on there in case uh, my other set of iPro, you know, fogs up, I clip it somewhere, it falls off, and now I don't have any eye protection. Uh, if you're doing any kind of assault stuff, you just having that extra pair means that you can flip them down and, uh, you know, have eye protection if you're doing a breach or something like that. So keep those on there at all times. Just, a, you know, your standard uh, G24, I think, uh, mount. Wilcox mount for your night vision. And then I do have a battery pack on the back of the helmet as well for my night vision. Uh, this is an M-Tech uh, Flux helmet. I've been using a ton of different other helmets and there's other good helmets out on the market. Team Wendy makes a great helmet. Uh, Galveon makes a great helmet, very comfortable. But I always come back to the M-Tech for my head shape and for how I like to wear my uh, chin strap it works the, the best for me. So again, helmets, bottom line, helmets are important. I think you should have one. I think you should wear one. Uh, if anything, having a bump helmet is still better than not having a helmet, in my opinion. There's just a lot of uh, injuries that can come from not having, having a helmet on, especially when you're doing anything uh, kinetic or dangerous. Uh, so I'm gonna go over to uh, things that I wear like clothing wise, and then we'll get into the chest rig after that. Um, tops, right? It's not a, it's not a, a competition on who has the cooler pattern or whatever. I recently heard that M81 is the most based camo out there. So based, but yeah, this top, you can find these at any surplus store. You can go to a sew shop and have someone modify it for you to, it's called a raid mod. If you want, you don't have to though. Raid mods are cool and all, but they're not necessary. This one's raid modded, which means that we've essentially taken the pockets off the front and we've put them on the sleeves so that they're more accessible when you're wearing body armor. Uh, the uniform is definitely a big part of my, my kind of layering plan for equipment. So I keep some stuff on my body, I keep some stuff on my chest rack, I keep some stuff in my ruck. 
it, in this kind of layered so that if I'm losing layers, then I still have some things with me. Uh, so these pockets, they have stuff that I need. That's why it's important, I think, to have some kind of utility uh, top, you know, with you. I think that everybody in the element, you should choose uh, what you're gonna wear. So if you're showing up with your, your unit or your group and everyone has a different color on because everybody wants to wear their Rhodesian, you know, brush stroke, whatever, that's a problem. You guys gotta decide what you wanna wear and then you guys gotta kinda stick to it in that so that you can, you know, that near far recognition where you see a group of guys walking and they're all wearing, you know, M81 with khaki pants or something, then you know those are probably your guys, right? So I have a IR sensitive US flag on the sleeve just for identification purposes. Uh, in my shoulder pocket, I carry a couple of things. I carry a blue chem light uh, wrapped in uh, some electrical tape. That's uh, for a signaling system that we use. But you know, chem lights are a good part of the kit and can be used for a lot of stuff. I keep a really small uh, signal mirror on there as well. Uh, this is again, just part of my kind of escape and evasion kit. It's also the mirror I use to uh, do any kind of like self care, right? You get something in your eye, something like that. You're trying to look at something. Uh, that's what I use. Same mirror, a big Sharpie. Use Sharpie. And then I have another Kana uh, decon kit in there for myself, right? In my sleeve. So if anything, I have the ability to, to clean some water. In the chest pocket, I always keep a small cut of VS-17 panel. And then uh, on the other side, I already have it pre-drawn with an arrow. That way I can uh, use this. This is again, part of our signaling plan. So I can use this to direct traffic or whatever, if I have to leave it behind. And then in my other arm pocket, I keep uh, my bug head net. So this is, <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite pieces of kit. And I get laughed at every time I wear it, but I'm the only one who isn't getting, you know, face bashed by a hundred mosquitoes at once. Uh, so I highly recommend them. I think this one's a C to Summit one. It tends to be the right shape. I can actually wear this over my helmet, uh, which is nice. So if you're sitting on security or something like that, you can put that head net on and, uh, and not be getting eaten by bugs. So that's my top. Uh, again, you don't have to go out and buy uh, this video isn't to try to get you to go out and buy thousands of dollars of stuff. Um, pants, again, uh, it's it's just a preference thing. I I like these pants. They're from Victos. Um, they're called the Contractor Pants, but I like them because they dry very fast and they have a lot of pockets. So if I'm doing anything uh, anything in the field, I like to have a lot of pockets because I'm gonna have things that I bring with me. You know, pocket knives. You know, stuff like that. Maybe I just want to stash my compass back in my pocket to make it easier to get to. Um, so I wear something like this, but I also like a pant that isn't, again, camouflage, right? Unless I'm unless I'm on the battlefield, actually in an official capacity, I don't really want my pants to be uh, camouflage. And the reason being that I can hide my upper body using a camouflage top, but if I need to remove it and just have a t-shirt on and these, I can start blending into a different environment. One, you know, an environment of people. So that's my preference. That's just one type of pant, just to give you an idea. Uh, again, you don't have to spend a ton on pants. They're not that expensive. Uh, they're not $300. You can, you can buy as many pairs as you want and they come in different colors. All of them solid, I think. Maybe they have a multi-cam one too. And then footwear. Uh, the only reason I put footwear in here, because again, it's, it really depends on the environment um, and it depends on your foot too. So, you know, maybe these boots aren't gonna work for you. We're also gonna be doing a video on footwear. So this is not gonna be an all encompassing conversation about footwear, but uh, these are Crispies. I don't know what model they are, but they're, uh, they've actually held up really well. They're really lightweight and they breathe actually pretty well for a, a boot that uh, is made out of leather but uh, you need something in warm weather that's gonna breathe, something that's gonna dry pretty fast. Uh, there's a lot of good options out there. Honestly, a lot of the military jungle you know, type boots are still the best option in my opinion, but they, they just lack the stability 
for your ankles. And I, so I just personally don't wear them. I do think that if you're gonna be humping and carrying weight, you should have an over the ankle boot. Uh, guys, you know, it's, it's been become kind of prolific to have like the really short, you know, Solomons, or I've seen people even wearing like barefoot shoes uh, on objective. I don't think it's the right answer personally. Uh, I think you should still be wearing an actual boot of some sort that goes over your ankle, has a little bit of support and protection. Uh, and as soon as you start putting weight on, you know, the barefoot guy is really gonna be suffering when he's trying to walk around with all that weight on there. So just, you know, think of that when you're selecting boots. Uh, like again, these are still covered in mud from the last time I walked through a swamp with them. Good boot. All right, so let's talk about the, the meat of this, which is the chest rig. So this is just an example of a chest rig. Again, we have split rigs, micro fights, thing twos, big chest rigs, small chest rigs, you know, whatever you really want. Uh, but when we're talking about security patrols specifically, uh, this is a good setup. And it's again, it's something that a lot of people have access to. This is the US Army issued tap kit um, with our, you know, taps upgrade kit applied to it to make it a little more uh, easy to use and a little more comfortable. Uh, so I'm gonna hold it up real quick. So it looks like with all the stuff in it. Uh, the reason why I wanted to show you guys this one is because I know there's a lot of mill guys who are watching, a lot of guys who have issued equipment. Uh, you can still, you can wear this without, um, without getting in trouble. So uh, split rigs, my favorite choice, to be honest. That's what I use the most of the time, but this is also a very good rig and I, I really enjoy wearing it actually. So uh, let's just get into it. So I have a, a little GP medium on the side here and that's where I keep my night vision at. Uh, so the GP medium will fit DTMVS. It'll fit most dual tubes uh, that we've tried at least, but uh, there's 31s in it right now. Again, having your night vision on your body, that's something that I always do. I always wear it on my kit. It doesn't, it never goes in my pack. It never sits in a truck somewhere. It's always on my kit. If I grab this kit, I wanna be able to, you know, drink, eat, and be able to see at night just by grabbing this. So if you think of that, like I gotta be able to feed my weapon, all that, but all that equipment has to be in here. So night vision, GP medium on the outside of that pouch. I take, I have my ear pro, my inner ears for the, for the ops core, which you can in a pinch, just put these in your ear as well and use them. I have a big boy Leatherman. This is a Leatherman Surge. And uh, the reason why I carry this one is because it is it is a field repair tool. I mean, it has it has actual tools on it, like really big, big BV tools, and it's very strong. And then I have my spare batteries in here as well. Um, and I carry batteries for my flashlight, my nods, you know, thermal, all that stuff. And then I also carry some spares in the the ruck itself. Uh, extra ones because you never want to not have batteries. All right, so coming over to the side of the medium GP, I have a TKO pouch. And inside of that, I have just a tourniquet stash in there. Uh, it just provides the tourniquet a little bit of protection from the sun and the elements, things like that, but it's still easy most of the time. It's easy to get to. And uh, yeah, that's just, I carry one tourniquet on, one accessible tourniquet on my kit. Uh, I usually carry a tourniquet in like my top or in my pants as well. And then I have one in the IFAC too, so that I have three on me. I think we get a little excessive with tourniquets, to be honest. Every medic's gonna be mad that I said that. But in my experience, people have like 10 of them on them and they use one tourniquet or two people use one tourniquet or whatever. Uh, so I don't have 15 tourniquets strapped to the front of my, my kit is what I'm saying. Um, moving over from that, uh, this is something that you may not have, and it doesn't matter because I may not have it either uh, if things go go wrong. But it's a it's a it's a persistent systems screen, and uh, it has a phone little phone holder there, which you may have a phone holder. You may keep your phone uh, there. the The truth is, is you know, everyone is really talking. The kind of the hot button thing right now is talking about. Uh, 
analog, right? Analog this, analog that. Like you should know how to do this on a compass and you should know how to use a protractor. And yes, those people are not wrong. Well, they're kind of wrong. You should know how to do those things, but you should not shy away from new technology either. So if you have a, a device, an extra device somewhere, and you're loading map data, and you're learning how to use ATAC, and you're utilizing these tools, that's smart. You should be doing that. And you should be accommodating it on your kit and figuring out how that's gonna wear and how you're gonna use those tools. So uh, we, we practice with them, we use them, but uh, they're, not our, they're not our only, they may be the primary, but they're not the only thing we have. We do have a pace plan for uh, both comms and you know uh, maps and things like that. So that's a screen, could be a phone, could be more pouches, could be whatever. Moving over from that, we have a spud pouch and in the spud pouch, we have a smoke grenade. So uh, smoke grenades, you can buy airsoft smoke grenades and you should try to get some of the types that actually have a pen and a spoon and you deploy them. Uh, I would avoid for any tactical purpose, having anything that you have to like light a fuse or anything like that. There's just not enough time to, to get that stuff done. It needs to have some kind of internal fusing system. Uh, but anyways, you toss that smoke, uh, use it for concealment, use it for, um, for signaling, whatever. I carry one because each man should be carrying one and that gives us a pretty good, uh, pretty good advantage there. Uh, moving on over from that, we have one of our MPRC radio chassis. Uh, the reason why I keep the radio here and not in like one of these slots on the sides in this particular setup is it frees up a little bit of space for me, but it also, uh, this particular radio, the MP5, um, it fits very well into this and it gives me access to the sides of it. And it also helps keep the radio uh, cool when it's getting overclocked because it has this uh, heat sink on the front that basically wants a little bit of air. So I don't want to tuck it inside of a pouch if I don't have to, although it can survive in there as well. Just get a little warm. So uh, this radio pouch can be adjusted for different radios. Uh, it's not going to fit your bow fangs and things like that very well, but it is going to fit all of your mill style radios or mill sized radios in there. Uh, moving down, I have a set of leather uh, gloves. These are the Petzels. Uh, these are, those are a guide glove. So they're leather and uh, I prefer leather because it, uh, it can be used for a lot of stuff, right? Multi-use, you can keep your hands warm. You can use it on ropes. Uh, you can use it to pick up like hot items or dangerous items, sharps, things like that. They're not, they're, they're relatively cheap. You can buy them at any store, uh, any climbing store. And uh, it's a good robust glove and they last a long time. So those are those are the gloves I wear. I do have a chem light bundle on here, which has become kind of a cliche because most people don't know why they're wearing chem lights. If you're wearing chem lights, know why you have the chem lights, I guess. Uh, but they're, it's a marking tool that we use. So I have them on there. Going on to the bottom here, we have a sack pouch. And in my sack, I carry my headlamp. Which is, uh, which is important. This is an old, um, I think it was called the Patika or the Tika, I can't remember, it's from Petzl. It uh, has a red lens that slides. And you can see I've had to put a new headband on it because the other one was, was so old. I prefer this one because it has that red lens. So again, I know that I'm never actually gonna accidentally going to white light and D the light. There are other lights out there now that have a slider red lens again. Um, I think Princeton Tech actually makes one, but you know, if you can find one of these, they're money. They also, the cool thing about this one is you could switch out the lens too if you find an original kit. I don't think they sell that one anymore. Uh, I carry a pair of shears in there as well. Uh, these are multi-use, right? Obviously we can use them to cut people's clothes off and stuff like that, but you can also just use them to cut other things. 550 cord, MRE bags, whatever. It's more of a tool. Carry a full IFAC in there. Um, this is our med sled, which has not released yet. But oh, you get a first peek. Cool. Thank you for staying this long into the video. Yeah. So med sled, full IFAC. Um, I don't have anything in the front pocket, which is weird because usually I would keep uh, gloves in there. So I obviously didn't follow my own packing list. But just like your your bear claw 
nitrile, you know, examination gloves. That's where I would keep them is in the front where they're easy to access. So moving into the back row, uh, basically the magazine pockets on the TAPS kit, uh, you can see that I have, you know, I have all these mags in here ready to go. Um, there's five mags in the back of the kit and then I carry one mag in the gun. And I actually usually carry one mag in a pocket as well, which is weird. Like a lot of guys don't have a mag in a pocket. Um, I carry one in there, especially with pants that enable me to carry it comfortably. Again, it's just uh, it's just kind of like a, a thing that I do. It's something, it's an old thing that I picked up along the way of just like being, like having some, one in my pants, it just enables me to do things like set my chest rig down still have another load. If I'm somewhere where I feel semi-safe, like say I'm on a FOB or somebody else's camp where our kit is sitting somewhere, I still have a, a, another load with me as well as whatever's in my gun. So those mags are in there. And then I have uh, a small Nalgene. Uh, this one is half the size of the 32 ounce. And I carry it in here because it fits one and because I Kind of, I drink out of this, I sip out of this as I'm going. And then when we, whenever we do a halt, I'll just fill this guy back up. So I'm always drinking, uh, you know, water out of my ruck. I'm pulling it into this. Uh, if I have my hose, then I drink from that first before I touch this. But this is enough water for me to, to be able to just like kind of escape and evade. Obviously having a full uh, liter would be better. Having two liters would be even better than that. But in this Rhodesian style rig, it just doesn't really afford to, you know, with the space. Uh, and my pack is usually pretty light in this setup. So I'm probably bringing it with me, to be honest. Um, something to consider about ditching a pack as well is that you may never in this, you know, if you're in a, if you're in that armed citizen category, and you ditch your pack, you may never have items like that again. Just something to consider. You may not be in a military situation where those can be replaced. So ditching may not be an option. On the other side, I have uh, an Islid. This is, uh, again, very privileged to have this tool, but this tool is basically just there to um, to basically you know, identify things or point things out in uh, that night environment. Uh, Military-wise, in, indispensable tool for communicating with aircraft, and uh, something that you should—they're not that hard to get a hold of. You should 100% try to get them for your unit. Um, you you really want this to communicate with aircraft. It's a it's a great tool to communicate with aircraft with. Then moving over, I have more chem lights. So I have a. Uh, to these little guys, again, those are used for very specific marking techniques. So you don't need to have the same ones as me, but you may have your own marking techniques that you use. Those are bundled in a certain way uh, so that you can, you can signal with them. Um, and then I carry a little bundle here of a red and a blue, which again, these are used for very specific signaling uh, scenarios and are something that I uh, carry with me so that, you know, I, I always have them, every man has them, and we can initiate those, uh, kind of those uh, visual signaling code words, if you may, uh, using those specific colors that we have designated for it. So the taps, it's kind of cool. On the back side has um, these three pockets, right? And you can store uh, kind of like admin items on it. Something that I really like about it, actually. It's something that the military did right, I guess. Uh, so starting on the side over here, there's like a zipper pocket. And inside of it, I carry my compass. This is uh, not a mill compass. It is a, um, I think it's a Silva. Yeah, it's a Silva compass. And I use this one. I picked this up in the army because Honestly, the Lensatic Compass is not, in my opinion, not the best compass. It's not the easiest to use. This one uh, is very accurate, very easy to use, very easy to adjust for declination and things like that. Um, I like this one a lot. You can buy all sorts of compasses. It, you know, Just know the compass that you're using and how to use it is really the advice. Um, protractor. Pretty, pretty standard army stuff here. If you're not familiar with it, 
you should get familiar with it. You can go on uh, CalTopo and you can actually generate your own map sheets and you can practice land nav with your bestest friends. Um, yeah, this is, uh, if you're not familiar with this either, this is just a 550 cord modification so that you can lay the protractor down and you can uh, pick out your, your uh, degrees, your angle or your azimuth using that line very accurately by connecting it to a point. Again, this isn't a land nav class, so if you know what I'm talking about, you probably need to get a land nav class. Center pocket, carry the old notebook, pen, uh, dry erase marker combo. So alcohol marker, black marker, that way I can write on maps. Uh, and then just a little memo notebook in a waterproof bag, so it's not getting wet. Some kind of map of the area I'm in that might be bigger, smaller, it might not be laminated, it might be laminated. That's gonna be in there as well. Things I just keep close to my body. And then uh, finally, you guys aren't gonna believe this. Another one. I believe in these things. I'm actually uh, pretty stoked that these are being made. Again, water security is really important, being able to purify water uh, on the go. With this and a bottle, you can really get a lot done. Uh, for you know, protecting yourself from uh, waterborne illness if you need to collect water in some shady situation. So that's basically it, guys. That's the kit. Uh, that's just something to get you started. There's definitely little nuances to everything. And I don't want that to be lost in this video that you're not gonna watch this video and just know every single item that you need. And it's gonna really be dictated by your skill level, what your experiences are and where you are. In the, in the country or in the world as to what you're gonna have to add to this kit or take away from this kit to uh, be successful. Uh, maybe down the line, we'll do some more of these where we do uh, some different, have some different people on and we also uh, do different environmental considerations like cold weather, things like that. Uh, but for now, this should get you started. So once again, I appreciate you guys uh, coming out, watching the video, stay until the end and uh, you know subscribing to our channel really helps us out, helps us spread the word. All this content we just do, uh, you know, to get you good information and give you a good, so reliable source of information. So we really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time.